creating a complete marketing strategy, which I see so few doing. Uh, we're talking with Jordan Ostroff, who is also an attorney and the founder of Legalese Marketing. Jordan, say hi. And we're talking about the, the one tactic that can quickly double. Hello, everybody. The number one thing you need to do to start pr proving your law firm marketing results, why you shouldn't break what's already working and why so many people do. Uh, Jordan's simple but really effective retargeting strategy and the biggest website mistakes made by lawyers. All this on this Garlic Marketing Show. Of course, this is brought to you by videocasestory.com. The number one thing that you should put on your website and everywhere are your client stories. Go to videocasestory.com, learn how we should collect, how we help you collect, craft, and deliver those, and even pop them into your retargeting. All right, let's get started. Marketing plan, a whole marketing strategy. Uh, you know, why is it important to have separate strategies? I don't see a lot of people doing that. They all have kind of separate PPC strategy, site strategy. Uh, why, in your experience, is it important to have it from one level? Yeah, I mean, look, when you get in the car, you punch an address into your GPS and it tells you when to turn. And so if you look at it from the standpoint of your business, those are the decisions you make as things go along. And so if your right tire has one strategy and the passenger door has another strategy and the trunk has a third strategy, you're not getting there. Um, or if you have no strategy, you have no idea where to turn. You have no idea what to say yes to and what to say no to. So the more you can dive into having this actual plan, the easier everything becomes the easier it is to make those decisions to hedge your bets the right way to invest the time energy resources needed to do things correctly because you're not saying yes to a million things or no to everything it's important like you said that the tires are all going the same direction isn't it uh i mean i see that all the time when i yeah absolutely um even the point where ppc and the landing page isn't coherent so I pay the pay per click, and they have Google ads, and then like message on that landing page isn't the same, and I'm like, I'm surprised you're getting any business. Well, right, and because I am, that's the follow up. Is then the client's like, how dare you do this? These are the worst leads in the world, or I'm not getting anything from it, or everybody's confused about what we do, and you're like, yeah, uh, I'm confused too. So makes sense. Why do you think like they a holistic, complete? start to finish strategy sure uh so i think it's kind of twofold law school does not teach us business you know you have at a lot of law schools 50 percent or more of the um graduates she's gonna come up with the right word are launch are hanging a shingle on day one having no business rundown having no law office practice management rundown having no you know idea how to market their company um, and then from the same from the flip side of that, you have a lot of marketers who it's easier to just run campaigns and override their churn rate than it is to take the extra time and really get these foundational things built so that clients see the right success. But at the same time, you know, they're taking more effort and time and spending it with each of those clients to get those things in place. So it's, you know, it's a twofold process or two way street. You know, the, the fact that you can get clients does not mean you're a good or a good marketer, does it? <laughs> Um, uh, and you know, yeah, you not at all kind of think that they know marketing and understand marketing, don't they? Yeah. Like lawyers, I, lawyer I feel like a lot of themselves like, oh, I've watched ads. I can be the head of marketing too. <laughs> so, I mean, I sit in a slightly different spot. Cause like, I think they're going to, if that's their interest, they're not coming to me. I do think there are a lot of lawyers that want to be the face of a campaign without providing what that takes. So like, hey, run me 75 billboards, put my face on it, but then I don't want to speak to clients. And you're like, I don't like, like be involved or don't, but make sure it's cohesive through the things. No, someone that wants to, you know, be the face and voice, but doesn't want to talk to all their clients. Look, I, Morgan and Morgan has a thousand attorneys. There's definitely a way to do it, but you have to cr you have to create enough of that buffer for that to make sense. You know, you've got to have enough things in place 
where they're going to get treated well, where you can set the right expectation. You know, the part that what I hate the most more than that is I always hate when you get the lawyer on the ads and then they do the consultation and then they never speak to the client. Like you came in for me, I signed you up and then I'm never talking to you about your case. That's where I have a real problem. You know, as long as the client knows when they can expect you versus another lawyer versus a paralegal, do whatever you want from there. You know, just make sure that communication with the client's honest. Complete marketing strategy. What what do you find is the biggest win, the big, fastest win that you get for someone? What works starts working better right away? That's a great question. I mean, the fastest win is normally what's already working, working better. So we will have clients running, you know, $10,000 in ads. They're zero in retargeting ads. So we'll pull 10% of the budget. We'll throw it over there and boom. And now they're like, oh my God, you just doubled my ad stuff. I'm like, right. Cause clients saw it the same, you know, the interested clients saw the ad multiple times. The hardest one is when there's nothing going on or nothing is working. Then you really have to pick and choose. Like I can't, you know, uh, you're spending 250 bucks a month for social media. It's doing nothing for you because there's nothing being done unique. So like, where do we pull resources that don't exist? Where do we set those efforts? You know, it's easier to make something that's already a six into an eight than it is to make something that's a zero into a six. The people that this works with best sports, things are kind of working, but just not working as well as they want. And, and so what are some of those signs that, hey, create, fix this entire marketing <laughs> strategy? Um, that's a great question. I mean, look, everybody I think wants more. So if you are sitting here, you know, you as the lawyer are sitting here and you can tell me, I like most of my clients. I just want more of them. Something's right. You know, you're getting referrals from the right people. You're saying the right problems, whatever it is. If you're sitting here saying, I hate all my clients. I get a million phone calls for stuff I don't do. Nobody has the money to afford me. That's where we need to really go like back to the beginning and reset a lot of these things. So it's really a question of like, what's your, in, what's your interaction like with the actual client? Um, you know, if it's good, if they've got the right problem, you just want more of them. Awesome. If it's, if, if the client's the problem somewhere along the line, your marketing's the problem. What, what's the process for doing that? The, it's a great question. I mean, look, here's where, here's where I want everybody to start with. What's the end result of all of this? Like whenever you are planning out anything, what's the end result? Where do I want, where do I want to get to? Obviously, you know, I use the GPS analogy. That's a, that's a physical specific location, but from a law firm, what does that look like? You know, are you doing a hundred percent personal injury? Is it all car accidents? Is it working with only realtors for their, you know, license and building up their business from a business lawyer standpoint? Think about that end result and then let's work backwards from there. So we have what we wanted to look like. Then we have who do we want to work with? You know, what sort of client? What's that ideal client avatar? We call it then, all right, now, how do I get in front of those people? Do I go speak at the organizations they're in? Do I target them with Facebook ads? Do I connect with the people that they're talking to on a daily basis for referrals and just keep working backwards? Um, then you track the results and you look at what's successful and you can double down on the things that are and you can tweak the things that aren't. But you really have to, I think, go back to that end place in mind because it's easier to see what makes the most sense to get there you know we say so few have that vision and don't want to decide um so you you do that what now now what do we do next so us personally we're going to start with like a deep audit of what you already have you know you want to have a hundred cases a year at an average case value of $5,000 a case, whatever that breaks down to. All right, let's see what you already have towards that. Let's look at the technology you have in place. Let's look at the tracking. If you've got Google, Google analytics, let's dive into and see what you're already ranking for. If you run Facebook ads, let's look at the results of that. If you're getting referrals, let's look at actually where those cases came from. You know, a lot of people will say they have no referral sources but you realize they've got 20 or they'll say they have 50, but really only 15 are sending clients over and over again. So figuring that out gives us the baseline of where you are, because look, there's always more that can be done. So we don't need to break what's not broken. We want to fix the things that make the most sense to fix. What's working and make it work better, uh, which makes complete sense. But I, I think everyone likes the, the shine. Um, yeah. Well, Ian, 
how often do you get the, I don't spend anything on marketing. And then you're like, but you get clients. So you're doing something like it's, there is something in there to get clients. If you had absolutely nobody, then sure. Then you do nothing on marketing, but you're speaking at the bar thing. You know, you're a member of this committee. You're taking these people out to lunch. You're doing something for it. So let's capitalize on that and take it to the next level instead of, you know, rebuilding everything from scratch. You have a business, you are marketing. It's just, you know, your marketing sources, like referral sources is a form of marketing. <laughs> it, it, that's so, it's so true. It's so true. Now we're looking at what's, what are some of the, you can put in place right away that help improve what's working? The easiest thing, like I talked about the retargeting ads, you already have the stuff there. You've already got the clients you're already sending them somewhere. Um, if you've got a website that's pretty good, then awesome. You know, changing some of the stuff around the website, uh, A, B testing different calls to action, you know, book a consultation versus booking a strategy session. Those things are easy. Uh, the thing for me, though, is a lot of times we need to have the discussion of setting the right expectations of the things that are not easy, that are at least not going to be quick. If we're rebuilding your entire intake process by, you know, through technology, so you've got consistent follow-up, so you've got the right tracking on all this stuff, I want to set the expectation of that's a three-month, that's a six-month commitment, you know, whatever that looks like for you, and I want you to be open to that because a quick fix is going to be quickly broken just as much as it's going to stay the right way to go. This is just such low hand. Few businesses use it, and... I mean, what's your best reach? You know, and, and is it a direct response? Because I feel I, one thing I hear from people is like, oh, we didn't get any leads from this. I'm like, you already have the leads. They're, we're just showing them the brand again. I mean, look, my direct answer to your question is my ad buy guy gives you the more direct answer. But no, I mean, I'll, I'm not going to leave you hanging like that. So here's here's, I think, the easiest way to look at it. How many lawyers do we talk to that have multiple practice areas, right? So maybe you're doing criminal defense and family law. For the most part, your criminal defense client doesn't care about family law issue and vice versa. There's the domestic violence stuff that overlaps. There's the criminal case that leads to the divorce. But ultimately, they have a current problem right now. So a lot of times you might run these you know, law firm overview branding videos, or you might have some really good testimonials that you've got, but then somebody goes to your page and it only looks like one of those practice areas. It doesn't look like the other one. And now they're like, well, why was I recommended to so-and-so if I'm only seeing this side? So even some of that retargeting being the other, you know, the other thing that you do, you know, you get a client who goes to the website, they bounce pretty quickly. Now let's show them the family law testimonial instead of the criminal defense one. And let's see if they come back and then let's send them to the family law page. And now let's have them go and look at this side because now we can do it where it's more what they were expecting. You know, for whatever reason, you didn't meet the expectation initially because they were looking for the different practice area and whatnot. Those are some really easy things to give somebody a better response rate, a better consultation booking rate, like whatever you want to call that. Um, uh, you know, I, I think that's such a good point too. People People assume they people spend more time on their website than they actually do. They, they think they're digging around and using. I have so many law firms that come to me and I mean, clients in general, they're like, I want this to be the end resource for everything. I'm like, no one's going to spend that much time on your website. And are you building it from the phone to begin with? You know, are you really, do you expect your client to be sitting there at a computer doing a deep dive scholarly essay? Or do you expect them to have hated what happened in court, be walking out of court on their phone, Googling for, you know, a better attorney for so-and-so and going through, you know, who's closest, who's quickest, who looks the best in a 15 second search. That upset and th then they forget about it and then you can follow up with them. And that's in any type of case, isn't it? Because I get that all the time. I'm like, well, people decide right away if they're going to work with us. I'm like, I don't think they do. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting because like I look, I, I am a lawyer myself. So when I say this, please take this as I am guilty of this. I was convinced I could convince anybody to hire me like I, you had to have a case. But after that, and I've come to realize uh, one, I couldn't. And two, I didn't want to. The more I could hit the right problem, you know, the more that I could compete on value and a high touch and 
getting better results than competing on price or quickness or expediency or whatever it was, the more that attracted the person I wanted to work with over and over again. And so there's this, at some point it's a balancing test, but ultimately it's a luxury to get more specific. And that's what I think you need to focus on for your law firm. Do you develop the entire plan? Are you doing it all yourself? Do you have vendors? Do you have work with partners? Is it all in house? Tell me about that. Yeah. I mean, look, the best plan is the one that gets achieved. So we'll have clients who they already have a case management system and it's working for them. Great. We don't need to change it. Let's tweak some of the workflows. Let's tweak some of the follow-up emails, whatever it is. We've got clients that have a SEO vendor and they're getting a decent result. Great. Let's not change that. Let's support them with uh, a podcast. Let's support them with a social media campaign, I, whatever that looks like that makes sense to um, repurpose that content, you know, to, to go back into it. So I want to get as ingrained as you need. And I want to stay out of the way as much as possible on things that are working, because I don't want to be the reason that your business tanks, but I want to be able to give you the honest answer of why your business is currently where it is. And sometimes that's, you're not wasting, you know, uh, what's, what's the expression that everybody has said? Half marketing doesn't work. We just don't know which half. You know, I, I don't need to pull you away from the stuff that I think is working, that I can see is working, that has the right numbers behind it. Let's take that money and put it somewhere else. The easiest thing is LegalEaseMarketing.com, E-A-S-E. It is all one giant dad joke uh, on LegalEase E-S-E, although we've got LegalEase Marketing too. Um, that's the best thing. You'll get a chance to kind of see what we do, how we do it differently. Or you can follow me on LinkedIn, Jordan Ostroff. There's only two of us. I'm the bearded lawyer, not the uh, salesperson in Boston. Listen to what's up there. You know, if you like the vibe, I'm here. If you don't, there's a thousand other options. And genuinely, I hope you find the right fit for you, for your firm, for your ideal clients, for, you know, the rest of your career. Uh, it was great talking to you, Jordan. Thank you so much for being on the Garlic Marketing Show. All right. And thank you all for taking Jordan and I on journey. Make sure to go check Thanks out Legal Ease Marketing. We'll put a link in the show notes. Uh, this has been On Garlic and the Garlic Marketing Show. All right. So let's do a quick intro. All right. For all of you attorneys and